chemical injuries of the eye are two ophthalmic emergencies which need immediate uh, intervention uh, so that grave complications can be avoided and uh, uh, visual uh, recovery can be made as much as possible so i am in a referral uh, kind of practice where uh, most of my patients uh, are being referred after industrial or occupational exposure and most of these patients are male there are a small subset of patients who are female uh, who have uh, chemical injury due to household uh, uh, acid or uh, phenyl uh, in the eye and among children chuna injury is very common so this is a small uh, uh, slide where uh, uh, most of the common acids and uh, alkalis have been uh, shown here and uh, the, the difference between acid and alkali we know very well that acid causes denaturation of protein and it it uh, you know prevents further penetration into the eye whereas alkali has both lipophilic and hydrophilic property that is why it has uh, you know chances of uh, penetration more into the eye and can cause more damage to the eye so the severity of ocular injury uh, uh, depends on uh, the toxicity and the concentration of the chemical Uh, the duration of contact with the chemical to the eye the depth of penetration area of involvement either one eye or both eyes and some additional factors like with how much force the chemical was you know uh, sp uh, spilled on the eye or how much uh, was the temperature of the chemical and while treatment the parameters which we have to address are the chemical itself the inflammation caused by chemical epithelial defect ischemia especially sclerosemia exposure whenever uh, uh, the chemical is spill over the face the skin contracture can cause exposure and rise in of iup is one thing which is often missed and the primary goal during the treatment uh, primary treatment is to reepithelialize the ocular surface uh, needless to say that uh, a thorough wash is very important we can use rl bss and this ph meter is very helpful we should uh, uh, bring the ph to 7 normal then only wash should be stopped and usually we do it under local anesthesia but sometimes in case of children or when the chemical is more into the furnaces then we can take the patient for general anesthesia also i am not going to do the detail of uh, classification but uh, usually we follow the wells classification which is widely accepted uh, i'll show a, a few pictures with which we can understand the classification This is this was the case who was referred uh, after chemical fumes exposure. You can see in the stain picture that only uh, the cornea is taking stain. The limbus and the conjunctiva is not involved. So this would be classified as grade one, where uh, zero clock hour of limbus and zero percent conjunctiva is involved. Another case where uh, almost less than three clock hour of limbus and less than thirty percent of conjunctiva is involved. So we can call it as grade two of the worst classification. now grade 3 where less uh, more than 3 but less than 6 clock hour of limbus and 30 to 50% of conjunctiva is involved then grade 4 where more than 6 but less than 9 uh, uh, is involved then these are higher grades grade 5 and then grade 6 where almost everything is burned out so if you see carefully uh, grade 1 and 2 uh, visual prognosis is very good and we can confidently tell the patient that they might not need any further surgeries for visual rehabilitation whereas in grade 3 and 4 we can counsel the patient that they might need you know further visual restoring surgeries like slat and all in future whereas in case of grade 5 and 6 uh, these patients they need they might need multiple surgeries and despite these multiple surgeries they might uh, the visual gain might not be very satisfactory regarding medical treatment uh, all of these patients we have to treat with topical steroid intensively at least for two weeks we can give safely the steroid topical antibiotics will be there to prevent secondary infection cycloplegic anti glaucoma medication and lubricants uh, are useful i am not very fan of lubricants in these patients because they are already uh, you know watering a lot oral vitamin c oral doxy and oral analgesics have a role now coming to few cases this was a case a 12 year old boy who was referred to me after one week of chuna burn and he was all those topical medications which i just discussed uh, despite uh, being one week uh, uh, when i saw carefully it was full of retained chuna all around the fornices so such patient giving medical treatment without removal of those chuna is not uh, very wise uh, so the patient was taken under general anesthesia and those retained chuna was Uh, removed i had to sacrifice uh, uh, conjunctiva also along with that 
and at the end of surgery uh, a large uh, amniotic membrane was draped all over the uh, upper surface with the help of glue as well as a, t- a pulse string suture another case which was referred after one month uh, of chemical injury here amniotic membrane was already done at primary setting you can see uh, stitches visible here uh, this is bandage contact lens but the retained tuna was still there and this tuna was causing melting in the cornea the cornea was about to perforate so the message is that uh, uh, primary treatment in primary treatment offending agent has to be removed that is the main goal only amniotic membrane is, is not going to work this patient underwent lamellar patch graft and we could save the eye from perforation so the lesson is removal of uh, offending agent is of utmost importance another case uh, this patient was uh, referred after acid burn into both eyes the right eye had around uh, grade 4 damage left eye was grade 2 so right eye underwent because he had scleral ischemia also in right eye we underwent tinoplasty with amg in right eye and left eye we managed medically So everything was fine after two months. Patient got six six vision in both eyes, but this was the status of his skin because he had uh, acid injury over the face also. He already underwent a skin uh, graft over the forehead uh, by the plastic surgeon, but uh, he still has to undergo multiple surgeries because there is you can see contracture uh, on the lower lid and acropion in lower lid. In fact, uh, the upper lid is also uh, totally adhered to the bro area. and he is not able to completely close his eyes so the lesson is counseling to the patient about involvement of other uh, oculoplasty and plastic surgeons and also we should have good rapport with our plasty colleagues uh, uh, so that these patient can be handled well another case where uh, it was uh, uh, the patient was known to a surgeon and uh, he referred the patient for amniotic membrane because he thought that it was a extensive chemical burn if you see that uh, only cornea was involved there was no almost no limbus involvement so such patients amniotic membrane is not required uh, and in dual classification also cornea involvement is not taken into consideration but what about this case this case also had no limbal involvement no congenital uh, no congenital involvement but he had tuna stuck only in the center of the cornea and this lime or tuna was keep on melting the cornea in the center uh, to prevent perforation i had to do multiple amniotic membrane uh, transplant for this patient uh, uh, and uh, obviously it uh, led to corneal scar in the central area and later he underwent a dlk for vision restoration so classification is not 100% complete that we also know another case where patient was referred after acute acid burn there was no severe ischemia on staining the whole upper surface was taking stain and uh, that is why he decided to do an amniotic membrane after uh, removing all the dead uh, devitalized tissue this was the uh, patient's uh, picture after amniotic membrane transplant and uh, this is the late picture everything was fine but one thing was missed by me that was the uh, high iob this patient was having throughout high iob you can also see that the iris tissue is atrophied so this is one common mistake we all, we we might do because uh, uh, that is uh, we don't have focus on that so digital iop we should check and whenever possible when ocular surface is restored uh, we can also take uh, application tension so never miss checking iop at every visit another case this was uh, uh, a six year old boy who was brought by his parents and telling that he was not able to open one eye and this was a clinical picture so many a times patients will not tell that they have chemical injury most of the time they will come with a history of chemical injury but this time it was not so when we inverted the eye there was a lot of tuna particle over the uh, upper fornix and other places so only the removal of offending agent was uh, sufficient to treat this patient the lesson is no ocular examination is complete without inversion of upper eyelid another patient who was uh, uh, referred after uh, uh, lime water spill over the eye the patient was referred after staining so uh, during staining we can stage with this but there are so many information we are not getting after staining like in this patient it's difficult to know whether there is any ac reaction what is the condition of the lens status and all so we uh, gave medical treatment and called the patient again uh, at evening and after that we could see that there was a whole layer of tuna uh, all over the cornea all over the superficial layer of cornea which was not possible to see in that staining 
so the message is before staining all the examination should be complete then only at the end only uh, staining should be done another case who came after extensive ammonia burn i see lot of cases with ammonia burn and these are usually very severe cases they come from industry and uh, this patient had severe uh, scleral ischemia also uh, this is a representative video of uh, doing uh, tinons advancement so whenever the area is totally burned there is no vascularity that a vascular area turning tiver as well as tinon we remove and you can see all those charred blood vessels so after doing complete excision uh, we have to pull out the tinon from all the sides uh, while pulling out the tinon one thing we have to uh, be careful that the formicil shortening should not be there this is an old video uh, where i have applied amniotic membrane above that ideally amniotic membrane should be applied first and then only tinon the advancement should be done next to next case this is the last case where uh, the patient uh, presented after cataract surgery and the typical history he gave that uh, in left eye whenever he was using drop he was using he was having burning sensation and the the picture of eye was classically looking like an acid burn so on uh, proper examination we found out that the the bottle of vigamox which the patient was using was of was of more yellowish color compared to the sample eye drop then we had a suspicion we checked the ph and its ph turned out to be very acidic and uh, this patient was counseled about that uh, probably it was uh, uh, mixed with some acid so the lesson is high index of suspicion is required uh, treatment part and all i talked about referral uh, that depends on which type of practice you do but ideally grade 1 and 2 definitely all comprehensive ophthalmologists can uh, handle those patients grade 3 and above you have to decide what type of practice you are but before referring always do a primary wash and remove the offending agent as uh, far as possible thank you uh -huh.